Once upon a time, there lived a lord whose palace was so splendid and so richly furnished that even the sultans could not be compared with it. He had dishes of gold and silver, sofas and chairs upholstered in the finest silk. The walls were adorned with every kind of curious antique. There was, however, something very odd about this lord. The color of his beard was a rich and shocking blue. His countenance was both distinct and unmistakable, and so he was never spoken of by his real title, which was grand and noble, but instead he was simply referred to as Bluebeard. Bluebeard. Well, hello there. I didn't see you. How are you tonight? Welcome, fellow humans, to a special, special episode of Theater of the Mind Players. Tonight, we have all the ladies, and we are going to be playing the feminine horror that is Bluebeard's Bride. I am Sarah Babe, and I will be your groundskeeper tonight. And please, ladies, introduce yourself. Tell us what aspect of the bride you are playing, and please include your pronouns if you do not mind. We'll start here. Hi, I'm Tawny P. Thompson, she, hers, and I will be playing the Animus. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, I'm Jordan Fishburne, she, her, and I'll be playing the Virgin, one show only. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Higgins, she, her, and this evening, I, oh, I will be playing, I will be playing The Witch, which I may reprise for other shows for other reasons, because, you know, it's fun. You're not the witch, you're his wife. Ah. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, this is a feminine horror game. We have already t uh, had all of the ladies fill out the proper safety forms. Uh, the safety forms that I use are the consent forms from Monty Cook. Very good. I like them. They use the standard green light go, yellow be cautious, red hell no, which is, I'm a big fan of it. There's a lot of subjects on there that are very common. It also gives you room to insert what your concerns are because, you know, apparently there's only two people on the planet that are afraid of worms, me and this one nurse I met once. So <laughs> I always write worms down because I'm terrified of them. And we will also be using tonight fancy little X cards that I made. So fancy. I know. So fancy. I'm so super excited. So X card for you. Thank you. X card. You can pass it down. For you. X card for you. You now, can't tell, but she put like three hundred hundred dollar bills in here. That's why they're so thick. I mean, it's actually cardboard, but <laughs> <laughs> we're a really I, high budget show, Sarah. It's our yeah. mad money for when we want to leave, yeah. <laughs> right? And now, well, I also figure if it's cardboard, you can throw it if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if anybody is unfamiliar, the X card is basically the no. If it is something where you are uncomfortable with it in any sort of way. You raise the X card, you can throw the X card at me, you put up an X, you just go, ah, 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 and we will rewind and put it into a situation that's more comfortable for you. And when you're running a game like this, or any game really, it can be something as simple as, can we not name him Tom? I really don't like the name Tom. Like, I can't deal with it. Everybody I've known who's named Tom is a jackass, so I don't want to. You know what you did, Tom. You know. Yeah. Tom. I was gonna say he didn't become my friend in my space. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> he said he would be everybody's friend. Yeah. He, <laughs> he lied to us. Uh, so that is 
what the X card will do, and we will be using that. Uh, Theater of the Mind players does use this in every other game as well. It's just a little less emphasized because this one, it's gonna hopefully be as scary as it is in my head. Uh, that also being said, if you are not in the right mindset for horror right now, totally okay if you take the time, take care of you, and not watch it right now. Perfectly okay. You are important. We don't want you freaking out. I don't want you freaking out. So take your time if you are not in the right mindset for it. Because there will be explicit content. And I mean explicit. Swearing. Everything. So, I think we got that out of the way. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan, do you need to get a swear out right away to, to kick us off? Darn heckin. I know, right? Flippity flapping, blue beard. I, I'll well, have a Pete. <laughs> I got another group oh. that I gamed with really well because it was like, Jeezy Crazy. And they're like, what did you just say? I'm like, Jeezy Crazy. Is this like, is it, did I screw up that? Is this something to, no, I've just never heard anybody say that before. I'm like, oh, okay. Not a lot of people use Jesus' street name. <laughs> It's his, it's his tag. It's yeah. his tag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else you ladies can think you would like to add to the uh, this is what Bluebeard Spray is about? I'm hype. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. Mostly because I trust all y'all. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> A lot of it is built around trust. And that is why we use the tools. And also we've been gaming together for... A minute. <laughs> A little bit. At so least 30 good. minutes. <laughs> At least 30 minutes. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let's get started. Now, ladies, you are all familiar with the tale of Bluebeard's Bride, correct? You are the bride who has been given all of the keys to the palace. You have access to everything. All of the servants, everything that is in this palace, the only stipulation is you are not to use the one tiny key or the one tiny room at the end of the tiny hallway. You know, we probably won't even have time to make it to that room anyways. It's not a big deal. Aren't you curious? <laughs> I'm always curious, but there's so much else to explore. I suppose. Curiosity killed the cat. But curiosity... <laughs> curiosity also led to a lot of amazing discoveries. Yes. So, the tale that you have heard, that you are now in, there's many different endings to it. Some endings, the brother rescues her. Other endings... The mother saves her. Other endings, she goes insane. And the scariest is that she is slain by her own husband. The man known as Bluebeard. He has a title, but nobody calls him by that. And remember, real life, this life your bride is living right now is not a fairy tale. There are no fairy godmothers, but there are definitely monsters wherever you may go. Nothing is certain. Nothing is written in stone. And with that, You are left by Bluebeard, who has had to leave quickly after your wedding night, even though nothing was consummated, much to the aspect of the Virgin's delight. While curious of what it's like to fulfill her wifely duties. I was nervous. <laughs> so now, you are ready to explore. Who has the ring? The ring goes to the aspect of the bride that is given the most submissive 
present to Bluebeard. And I will let the three of you decide. The Virgin gave a sachet of herbs and a box of soaps to remind him of the day they met. He had mentioned how good we smell. <laughs> <laughs> the witch gave a gift of spurs because now we ride together. And the animus gave a hope chest with homemaking items, something she could contribute to the home. To clarify, he said we smelled nice, but not in a creepy way. Uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. What? Then, then he came up and just went. <laughs> you smell good. You smell nice. <laughs> yeah, even if you know someone, that's not the proper way to say it. <laughs> no. So I've been told. It will be moving forward for this group. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of questions. <laughs> so who do you ladies think gave the most submissive present? I could see the herbs yeah. being pretty submissive. I could see the chest, too, because you're bringing in materials that will help make the home a home, kind of fulfilling the role of a wife mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say the herbs seem to be more of an enticement, Fair. just sort of a... Think of me after, yes. or while we're parted. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. While you're in your bunk. And yeah. And you're like, I brought a fi frying pan and a fish. <laughs> and, <a beer." laughs> and I'll cook for you, type and of some thing. some candlesticks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh. Like, but fish is good. We love fish. Because a wanna... lot of the homemaking things are things designed to serve your husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, I think. Fair congratulations, hand. the Animus gets to have the ring. But first. also, the frying pan is an excellent way to end an argument. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, also, do not hit yourself in the face with one. So I've been told. Hilarious. The ring or the fright? <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Both. <laughs> Both will leave a mark. <laughs> and that is a, that is a faceted ring. <laughs> um, first door on the right? Yes, we can do that. Straight on till morning. <laughs> what, which key are you going to use? Or let's describe the door first. Sure. The door is... Well, I'll tell you what the door looks. Oh, okay. And then... <laughs> sorry, my bad. I thought you were going to make me describe the door, and I was like, okay. Do you want to describe the door? No, go for it. Okay. What? So I think the first door on the right is going to be a trophy room. Trophy room. So this door has beautiful carvings of stags and bears and beautiful fowl with their arms outstretched beautifully in flight and water and trees and just wilderness the definition of a man cave if you will I think that definitely entices the animus she's kind of wild mm -hmm. spirited that way um, so yeah. what does the key to this room look like? I think the key looks like the skull of um, of a deer. Okay. With the antlers kind of going towards the the key part. So, like the handle of the key yeah. and going towards the shaft of it. Yeah. What do the what do the teeth teeth look like? Teeth are very clean. Okay. It's are a they well used room? Okay. Are the teeth just normal metal teeth of a key, or...? I think it's more like a skeleton key. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think they're like actual fangs from animals? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we dig it? So it's just all like bone white? Yeah. All right. And I'm not sure if it's made of bone or metal. Okay. Mm. Or just like painted metal, yeah. something like that. Or maybe ivory. Yeah. Or actual bone and teeth. Mm -hmm. What does the door sound like when you open it? What does the lock sound like? Heavy. Okay. Uh, heavy and, but well oiled. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also just a very solid lock. Okay. Um, no squeak. 
I think he comes in and out of this room a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we will enter the room. And on the walls, you see plenty of taxidermy, you know, the, the heads of deer, of elk, probably a moose, because he's that way. Uh, and you have like a lynx and a bear and another bear and another bear. These animals are so beautiful. And there are cages hanging from different areas of the room. And they're birds, exotic birds, beautifully colorful birds. Who feeds all these birds? Oh, they're not alive. Oh, they're just in cages. They're just in cages. Okay. Funny to keep them in cages, even though they can't fly away. Yeah. But it looks like that one is it? Hello. It can speak. It can speak. I think it repeats. I think it repeats. Let's teach it profanity. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Rude. Oh. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> and the bird just kind of preens its feathers. And you see it just slowly bring up its wings. And it's this beautiful ivory color of the wings that just, you know how black wings on like blackbirds have that beautiful, like almost oil shine to them. Somehow the white wings have that. Ooh. And it seems that on the edge of the wings, it's almost like a beautiful lace pattern. Oh, you are a pretty bird. Can I investigate a mysterious object? Yes, you may investigate a mysterious object. So to that is one of your maiden moves. It is. So when you use a maiden move, you ask two. Your options are, whose item is this? Why did Bluebeard keep this item? What memories does this item hold? What about this item is odd or uncanny? I'm going to start with why did Bluebeard keep this item? He loves me. Not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> we love Frederica. We do. <laughs> we do. Frederica doesn't talk back. He loves me. It's an impressive More than his bird. Wives. It is. That's such a weird question to ask a bird. He loves me. See? It's getting more and more insistent. He loves me. Tell him you know. We, we, we know. We know. He does. He loves me. He does love you. Eh? Of course I he would love such a pretty bird. Think of my second Thank question. Thank you. <laughs> Who did you belong to before Bluebeard? Myself. Pretty bird. Pretty, pretty bird. You <laughs> must have enchanted her out of the trees. <laughs> pretty for Bluebeard. Always pretty for Bluebeard. What? Do we tweet, think she tweet. could be a former wife? Tweet, 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 tweet. Former wife is a bird. Magic. <laughs> he loves me. I didn't say he, he loves me. You. Of course he does. You're beautiful. I'm yeah. giving you the ring. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's my ring move. I'm giving you the ring. You're using your... Oh my God. I'm right. done. I'm done. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> Tap it out. Don't buy it. <laughs> I'm now immune to trauma until you pass the ring on. <laughs> well, then I shall love you too. Let me free. We let her free. So cramped. Where? I mean, she probably can't get out of the room. So cramped. A tiny cage. You don't think there's a reason she's in there? He loves me. Is there a bigger cage in the room? Let me look. <laughs> he loves me. 
lucky that me. Of course he loves you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, we could care for someone if this is a horror. She's kind of creepy, but I don't know that she's a horror yet. <laughs> Do the maiden moves, are they done beep, only beep. by the maidens? Or, okay. Beep, beep. The ring moves are different. <laughs> beep, beep. Um, You hear in a further corner? Mm -hmm. He loves me! Uh-oh, there's more. There's more of them. <gasps> Apparently um, we've got a... This isn't just a trophy room. This is also a menagerie. Could we take stock of the situation? Does someone else want to take stock of the situation? Considering that I investigated my story. Me, me! Me! Can I do a maiden move since I have the ring? Yep. I would like to take stock. I can I can take stock. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I would love it if you would take stock. <laughs> you would take stock. I would love it. When you take stock of a tense situation, ask one, what stalks the bride from the shadows? What traps have been laid for the bride? What does this place demand of the bride? What horror here is hidden from the bride? I think I want to take stock and see what does this place demand of the bride? Us. <laughs> <laughs> this place demands your beauty. I must acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> it demands of you to show your best in this room, to be worthy of this room. Green eyes! Green eyes. It wants to eat our eyes. It's observing how beautiful our eyes are. Nah. I he loves me. I want to try to. Um, Wings crowned. Wings crowned. If I Wings crowned. Is it talking about physical beauty or inner beauty? Because inner beauty would let the bird out. Red hair. <laughs> Red hair. Red hair. Red hair. That or it wants to steal our hair and eyes. That's These are true. the two options here. Pretty skin. Pretty skin. <laughs> Would you like to give up some skin? Does it want my skin? I, no. I think I'm going to try to see if out of the things that are here that aren't alive for the definition of the word can I make some sort of peacock feather uh, shoulder cape to kind of emphasize our red hair and green eyes and make ourselves more beautiful I will say yes because I really like that idea <laughs> I figure if there's a whole bunch of uh, taxidermied animals in here peacock yeah that's and like that's peacock. that's exotic enough that yeah. you know Ethically sourced. <laughs> <laughs> Out of an already dead animal. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to try to just make just a feather shoulder cape um, to really pimp ourselves up a little bit. Pretty? To pretty? Thank you. Not as pretty as you. Pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> pretty? Pretty. The other one is asking pretty? Why? Pretty? Look at you, you're gorgeous. Uh, this bird has that kind of iridescent white again, but the kind of lacing that you see is sort of around the chest area of the bird that kind of seems to make a little bit of a V up into the, like the wings. And you notice when this particular bird nods forward, that the feathers move forward a little bit, and when they fall back, they kind of fall back into a little bit of a tiara, like a little crown. And they're extra, like, almost silver-looking. They're in their wedding clothes. <laughs> Can we find uh, 
Uh, does he also have like um, insects, like entomology, whatever? We could make like a little crown out of like beetle wings. Or um, you make a crown of bugs. Yeah, but they're now you're talking. Bugs. Let's see. <laughs> I I would let her fly. You know, yeah, I think because it's pretty and this is a trophy room and a lot of bugs you're not going to see in this specific region when he travels. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, I like that idea. Uh, yeah, um, we make a crown out of butterfly wings. It's only out of my respect for the other aspects of my psyche that I'm putting this on my head. <laughs> pretty? Oh, not as pretty as you. Thank you. These are really beautiful birds. Do I see any more? Wings cramped. <laughs> Does she have a name? Mm. Have we asked? We haven't. I don't want to know. Think that I am going to caress a horror. Is it a horror? Yeah. I, I said so. <laughs> I called it. Uh oh. Plus blood. Is that a thing you're good at? I don't have a negative to it. Uh, that's that's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, and caress a horror. Can you let us know what that lets you do? Uh, when you caress a horror, roll plus blood. On a hit, the horror is swayed by your stroke. Direct what was intended for you to another victim in the house. On a seven to nine, it will shift its attention, but only if you participate in some way. So for this particular system, we are using 2D6. It's uh, powered by the apocalypse. So if you're familiar with those, ga those games, that's what we're using. So, Ms. Virgin, would you please? Mrs. Virgin. <laughs> I just got married. <laughs> It's your paperwork, isn't it yet? Shut up. <laughs> I have the ring. <laughs> Mrs. Virgin. The sheets aren't on display yet. Yeah. Oh! Spirit oh, oh. is not consummated yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> Dice drop. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Okay, so that is... Between seven and nine. So that is a seven and nine. That is where you have to participate. Participate in order to redirect. Yes. <sighs> okay. Let's for the redirect. Let's say. Oh no! There's two birds. So the first bird that you've met has been the most insistent mm -hmm. about getting out. So what would you like to do to redirect the bird from you to something else? Oh, okay. We haven't really run into anybody else yet. The only other one is that other bird. It's like when you get Siri to ask another Siri a question. Maybe we can get them to oh, talk to each other yeah. and, get, okay. and get them into a feedback loop. Of... This is why I think the witch is so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I... Gently, um, the first bird we came across is on like a beautiful filigree cage on a mm -hmm. stand with wheels. I'm going to very gently move the cage um, nearby the other bird and say, Oh, you're both so pretty. Wings cramped. Wings cramped. Look at that pretty bird. He loves me. He loves me. <laughs> He loves me! He loves me! So to get out of the room, we have to propose a truth, correct? Yes, I think I... Mine! When you propose a truth about a room, detail what you think happened in the room, to whom, and why. Next, describe the token you take that supports your interpretation of what happened here and mark it on the appropriate token track. A uh, question for you, Jordan. Uh-huh. How close are the cages? Um, I think I put them not too far because I wanted to make sure that they could see each other and that they would interact. So I think maybe just like a foot apart, maybe two feet at most. They're fixing a fight. Okay. 
You don't put beta fish next to each other. <laughs> yeah. He loves me, mine! He loves me, mine! 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 No! No! I'd like to propose a truth. <laughs> <laughs> now that they're reacting very aggressively. Um, and they start shaking their cages with yeah, their wings. I want to get the hell out He's cramped! Wings cramped! So, I mean, he could have definitely picked some beautiful birds that reminded him of people that he's known before. He loves me! Or his wives that he has had. Previously. He loves me! Do we know about those? <laughs> I don't know if we've established whether or not we know. It is rumored that Bluebeard has had many wives. Many wives. Okay. But there has never been any formal funeral or any rites that are held at Okay, and we palace. all do know we do know this. Yeah. Okay. He could have brought them back as gifts when he went traveling. He's mine! He's mine! He's just not incredibly vain and likes to feel as though someone is obsessed with him. I mean, my ring! His his wives. My ring! My ring! My ring! And there is just one part of me that went, is interested in poking the badger with a stick, but it would not help us get out of this room. <laughs> You hold my, up your ring. Hands. <gasps> my ring! My <laughs> ring! He loves me! I told you! I told you they're former wives! He loves me! I'm shivering in fear. <laughs> I did just get goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> is that. Uh... He loves me! So, shiver from fear is a ring move. He's mine! Name the thing you're most afraid will happen. The groundskeeper will tell you how it's worse than you feared. Keep the ring and choose two, or pass the ring and choose one. <laughs> uh, it infects the bride with its perversion. It has the bride in its clutches right now. It speaks to you. Take one trauma. Just you, sister. I will say... It speaks to you. Take one trauma. Just you, sister. You see the wings slowly finger and grab and shake. Wings cramped! Wings cramped! Wings cramped! Oh, wow! Wings <laughs> cramped! Sister Jordan, I need you to know that this trauma you're feeling is your own fault. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> you must understand your naivete led to all of this. And had you simply dug deeper and allowed yourself to see the truth, you wouldn't be feeling the trauma right now. Uh, is that a move you're using? It is. Um, it's my face move, which is the shield. Okay. You believe the trauma is your fault? Yeah. <laughs> You can mark one less trauma. Oh, I took no trauma from that. Okay. <laughs> Didn't have to hurt my feelings for it, sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you blacken my innocence with your every word. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I gave the ring to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure. Did our truth work to get us out of here, though? Oh, is that? What, uh, I'm sorry. That's one of the exit moves as well. Uh, propose a truth was was the exit move. And the truth was. I guess we never finally decided. So technically, <laughs> as the ring wearer, I'm the one that needed to decide on it. But then I shivered from fear and gave Instead, it to yeah, Jenny. Yeah, okay. Okay. Or at the witch. So do I? Do I still need to pull an exit move? Yeah. All right. He loves me. My ring. Ready? Pretty. They are pretty. Pretty. <laughs> when they're not half transmorphed into women. 
transmogrified. <laughs> Do we think if we opened the cage, they'd turn back into women? Nope. Nope. I, don't think so. I think I think they'd we... attack us. They'd attack us, or if we open the cage, then whatever this enchantment is, yeah, pretty might affect they'd, us. I would imagine yep. they die. Yep. yep. Because he's keeping them here. Well, he's keeping them alive for a reason, but for whatever reason. So, what I think happened in this room is that she became very possessive of him and did not want him to leave and her love became obsession and that was the only purpose that she served and he said no the purpose that you serve is that you are just beautiful for me i am not a creature that you control you are mine and he put her in a cage and she became this bird and the token that I will take is one of the feathers that fe- that was shed during the dust up. Sadly, this is a token of disloyalty. It definitely is. It definitely. There is no way that it can be a token of loyalty. Nope. So I will be, I will be having a trauma. Thank you. Great. And I would also like to leave the damn room. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get to keep our peacock feather cape, or <laughs> um, we can leave it if you want us? Uh, to. I got a thing for that. Okay. The bride comes out of the room, and as you're dusting off the feathers, they crumble into dust and catch a wind, a draft that is coming through the, the hallway. Oh, that was odd. And disappear. Oof. All right. I worked hard putting that together. (laughs) You did. You did. And with that, I think it is time for us to have a little sit down in the hall and take a little break. There was a nice little seat, a settee. Right mm-hmm. Ah, yes, the <laughs> chaise. We'll, we'll recline a moment on the chaise and consider our next move. <laughs> and we will be back next with the continuation of Bluebeard's Bride. Congratulations, fellow human. You've reached the end of an exciting episode of Theater of the Mind Players. If you enjoyed our story, please like the video. If you want more games, subscribe to our channel. Attack the bell for notifications on new posts. If you liked the episode, please tell us what you enjoyed the most in the comments. If you loved the episode, consider joining our Patreon. You'll get access to special shows, session zeros, and help us determine what we play on the show. We love our friends of Pat Rayon, and we hope to see you there.